Like all good award shows, we should start off with what am I wearing, and this is from uh, T Fury, and it is a great mashup of uh, Totoro and Big Hero 6. Well, this is Mitch, and I'm covering the NAMM show from my very messy kitchen, and if you're asking why there are too many cheap asses who wouldn't pay my way or give me a pass or anything like that, but I'll do the best I can, and I'll tell you what I come up with. Scary, huh? Yeah, you're thinking, I'm a Mac guy, Apple guy through and through. Why do I have this Lenovo? It's a Lenovo 2 Pro Yoga. I wasn't kidding about the messy kitchen. The reason why, it is the ultimate YouTube device. The reason why is it's powered by a program called Hyper that I absolutely love. And it's, uh, if not 4K, it's bordering on it. It absolutely looks great. And if you were to buy one of these things just for the sake of uh, watching YouTube, I don't blame you one second. It makes sense. That's what I do it for. It is a real Windows computer and runs all those other, you know, dumb Wintel applications, but I've got a Mac. I don't need that. But as far as watching YouTube, this combination of Hyper and this Lenovo 2 Pro Yoga, Yoga 2 Pro, Pro Yoga 2. I don't know why they put it in that order, but they did. But I absolutely love this thing. Now, the big surprise this morning with the NAMM convention is I accidentally clicked on this link. I've been watching all of Sonic State's uh, coverage, which is probably some of the best NAMM coverage. And I love uh, Nick and those Buffin, Baffin, Muffins, who are pants or something like that. I haven't caught on to all the British slang, even though that's my heritage. But uh, they're pants, really. And they wear pants, too. But I accidentally clicked on a fender a video and uh, one of the things was talking about the new American Strat and the uh, last thing in the world I wanted to hear about is a humbucker the bridge position of the Stratocaster but you know what I bought my first Stratocaster in 1979 and I'm a Fender guy I've got a couple of Gibsons I've got a lot of other things like ESP Ibanez and Gretsch's and uh, more than I can name but I just love that Fender sound you know what I'm convinced. The way that they wired this thing, it sounds like it's really cool, and I really can't wait this new American Strat with this double hum, with this humbucker slash single coil. Uh, the way that they've got the setup in the bridge position sounds exciting. I really can't wait to check it out, and I hope the bank account uh, allows maybe it to follow me home. Uh, it seems like Sonic State is in the state of California and must be sleeping because they really haven't uploaded anything since that last great thing eight hours ago with the Arturia Beatstep Pro. And that sounds like it's a good price. And the original Beatstep was like the best $99 bargain in the world. If you have anything that cares about CV or MIDI, I don't know why you don't already have one. Even with this new update coming out, I'd still buy one. $99, that's chump change. Just go and get it and then find out why you got it. Now, it'd be totally wrong with me to sit there showing a Sonic State's coverage and um, got the view and the audio turned off anyway. But uh, I'll show some of the commercials so they get too mad at me. And uh, one of the things that I'm really excited about is Teenage Engineering, who constantly put out really, really cool hardware. And uh, they do such a great job at innovation. They put out three, well, I'm calling them calculators, they're $59 a piece. You've got something that some sort of rhythm, some sort of bass, and some sort of melody. They all wire up and connect together. And uh, I uh, just didn't wait to hear the whole demo. I just ordered it myself. I'm uh, waiting for uh, Sweden to deliver. And you know what? Unlike Electron, who makes great, great stuff from, I believe, from the same company, excuse, excuse me, the same country, uh, and they're impossibly hard to use, I bet you these things are easier than pants to use. Did I get that right, Nick? It's a depressing moment when I realize that my IRA collection of Roland stuff is no longer complete and something else is coming out, but it's got pretty colors and I'm kind of excited about this too. I don't know if I caught how much it is, but it's probably like $600 and how could I possibly have all the other IRAs without having the MX1? I don't even know. I'm not sure what it does. It's a playable mixer or something like that. Uh, if you, once again, want to find out in detail what all these things are, you know, there's Nick, and he's talking to some fellow who is wearing a hat, and he's got a very cool t-shirt on there, and no matter how hard I try, I probably can't get one, but uh, always check out sonicstate.com, because uh, they're really on the money, and they're pants, and they're boffins, or something like that. Although I've uh, disabled audio right now, because I don't want to be in too much copyright violation, this is a oons, oons, oons speaker, it's from Cambridge Audio, 
and I got it on an Amazon deal, uh, totally unlike the uh, Oots pretzels, which just happened to be cleverly placed there, it has nothing to do with that. And the monster, I'm looking for endorsements. Does monster want to endorse me? Or uh, the guys who make this wonderful sausage or pop tarts that are upside down, uh, confectionery of arts. And uh, this is a great place that used to be uh, Blackwater. I think they changed the name five times, but it was some of the best shoot houses I've ever been to in North Carolina. Anyway, getting back to the speaker, this was an Amazon special, and I think it's one of the best Bluetooth speakers out there. I own more expensive and I own certainly less expensive, but if this thing goes on sale, don't hesitate. It really, really sounds great. I have it wired because I have this thing about lag. I haven't checked lag on it. It's nowhere near as bad as the Andrew Jones, uh, you know, speakers that I have underneath my uh, television sets with the subwoofer. That sounds amazing, but like the lip sync is off. But uh, I can't tell you how much sound comes from this, this guy. It's really worth checking out. Hey, uh, since we're talking about Ira, I love the series. I love Roland. I love what they've done with this. But let me tell you one thing about the Ira system is when you go to do a uh, firmware update, it is the most convoluted, convoluted process. I can't even begin to tell you. You have to load up your doll. You have to load up a VST within it. You have to click on a bunch of buttons. And this is even just to uh, do some of the plug outs that they have, which is a very cool feature. I wish there was a way to have more than one plug out going at one time. And I really wish there was just like a single button click to update the firmware easily and a single button click to switch and load the, uh, oh, my daughter says this is cool, uh, and load the uh, different uh, plug outs very, very quickly on the fly. It's just too convoluted as it is right now. Thank you. Yuki, newsflash. One of my cats chewed one of my cables yesterday. An audio cable. Was it you? Did you do it? Did you chew my cable? What do you think? Is that a face of the cat that would chew my fine audio cable? And eat Pop-Tarts? In a messy kitchen. This is Kishi. Kishi's a Bengal. He's been around for a little bit over 11 years. He's a real cute cat. Got a little bit of asthma. Absolutely adorable. Uh, in 11 years, he's never chewed a cable. I think he's off the suspect list. What do you think, Kish? Get those cute cat lips. This is my JHS color box. It's as close as I'll ever come to a Nev system. More than likely, it did not chew the cable. My MakerBot Replicator 2, it printed a faceplate that is at now. That's as close as I'll get to the show. Over here is Oliver. He's also a Selkirk, and he is a kitten, and he is the prime suspect in the cable chewing, and he's also extremely backlit. I told you not to watch this video, didn't I? But he's quite cute. Well, I'm not exactly sure where the camera is on this thing, so I'll just keep talking to weird places and uh, show you uh, just how unshaven I am and how unclean the kitchen is. But uh, I think it'd be best if I covered the rest of the show at another time, and uh, maybe I'll watch some of the videos ahead of time. But if anyone wants to send me, if anyone else does want to send me to uh, NAM next year to actually cover these things in person, check out that little power failure over there. I got this uh, GDC plug and the TARDIS. Maybe the TARDIS is making the power fail in the kitchen. Uh, Yuki, stop that, please. Yuki, Yuki. Told you not to watch this video, didn't I? Anyway, if uh, anyone would be so kind as to actually send me next year to uh, NAM, I would do much, much better coverage. I'd actually ask them. Interesting questions, uh, have better audio and higher production values, and uh, wouldn't have as many investigative reports or cats bothering me. Uh, any takers? I was thinking maybe Mark Verbos, Verbos as I believe he likes to say, uh, Tony Rolando, and I'm calling out uh, Sam Botstein from Tips Electronics. Maybe uh, they're the ones who are going to fund my trip next year. And... Uh, Jose from Resistance, because he lives 40 minutes away at these cool as they get. Thanks, guys, and I'll make another video to annoy you later. Once again, you're watching these of your own fruition. Is that the right word? You are watching them because you feel like it. I didn't tell you to watch it. I didn't tell you to click subscribe or wherever the hell that is. I didn't tell you to click on any stupid links. I didn't tell you to buy anything from my Amazon linked account, which isn't linked properly yet. But I will say, uh, you really shouldn't be watching this. You've got a better use of your time.
You've been warned. Cheers.